Hello, welcome to the Paper Snob. This is Tara. Today I'm going to be working about working on Mad About Mini Paper Pads. This is a monthly haul that I participate in each month when I can and we're supposed to be using our mini paper pads. We're also allowed to use scraps and of course one full sheet of paper for the background. And I have chosen this really, really old Cosmo Cricut collection called Early Bird. I actually have two um, pads that are partially used. And this collection came from 2009. And if you are brand new to scrapbooking, Cosmo Cricut is no longer in business, which is such a shame. I loved their papers. So I'm gonna be scrapbooking using some scraps from this mini paper pad from previous layouts. And I've got these scraps here all set up and then one of the full sheets of six by six pattern paper and then this is a scrap of cream cardstock that i was hoping to use to um, map my photos and i see it's not quite large enough so i'm gonna have to go and see if i have another piece of it in my scrap bin scraps are something that i am trying to use up because we are moving on june 1st and Right before we get packed out by the moving company, I will probably toss most of my scraps. I have been moving them for years. Um, we lost our household goods coming home from a Germany assignment in 2010. And so since 2010, I have been moving the scraps that I have created from place to place and um, this is our 15th move this summer so probably roughly 11 of those moves have been since 2010 so I just I think it's time to use or lose them that'll just be something that I am purging from my own stash so that I can start again when we get to our new place okay all of that to say I am scrapbooking these two photos of my children. We went to, um, it was an Indian, I wanna say a showcase. I don't really remember what they called it exactly, but we watched a war dance and looked at some of the things like the teepee and the kids could look inside the teepee and see what Indians lived like. And so it was a really, interesting and fun thing that we did when we were stationed at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause this video and when I come back, I will have it all sped up so that you can watch me put this layout together. I'll be right back. So I had to switch out that piece of off-white cardstock for a darker um, tan cardstock to map my photos. I had two of those exactly the same size and so I pulled those so that I could mat these photos. I didn't really want anything very dark but I also didn't really want white and so I was looking for off-white because you know the tone in those pattern papers is off-white but this light I would call it a craft um, cardstock works out fairly well and I'm just going to mat these two photos and then these strips of paper I am gonna trim down to two inches and um, that way I can stretch them across the page easily with, um, so that I have a center band across the middle of the page. Now, <clears throat> somehow I managed to not get one of them trimmed properly and I have to take it back off and retrim it. And I do that part off camera. I'm not real sure how I managed it, but oak it oak. Believe it is the um, first cream one that I did. I didn't trim properly. Now I'm going to be trimming four half inch strips from the striped paper to use as borders. 
and I will be stitching those borders off camera here. So, um, and I thought I was going to use that map um, font that I have over there, and it just disappeared on my background once I tried to lay it out, and so I have to switch my um, alphas out for something else. So here is where I start trying to figure out what I did wrong. Um, I get the first two on there and they're even enough. And then I put this one here on and I can see here that it is actually wider than the rest of them. It's not that much wider, but it is wider. And so it kind of messes me up. And then plus, I don't know how I managed this, but it's crooked. The background is crooked. So I do shut off the camera and fix that here in a second. I'll be right back. Okay, I figured out what I did wrong and I fixed it as well as I could. I'm going to have a slight gap right there in the middle, but it's not going to be that noticeable once I put um, my photos on. So what I'm doing here is I'm using this stencil and this distress stain to put a little bit of messy mixed media on this background. It just, it's too plain for me and while it works well. I still like the inking better. And so I'm just going to add this inking on here before I put the striped borders on. And like I said, it is a messy mixed media background. It's not meant to be clear or anything like that. It's just kind of meant just to give it a little bit of color and maybe what you would call texture, although it's flat. It's not really textured, but it depth, I guess, is the word that I'm looking for. And I'm just kind of just playing. I'm not trying to make it perfect at all. Mixed media never has to be perfect. And I really like how this turned out. I don't use the distress stains as much as maybe I should. They're kind of not my favorite thing because once you put that lid on it, they smell bad. So you can see I didn't really let this dry at all and so I'm just kind of working around that very wet mixed media. Now again normally I would allow the mixed media to dry before playing with a layout but for this because it was such a messy mixed media to begin with it to me it just didn't really matter all that much. I'm going to go ahead and adhere these striped borders on here. I'm just going to put my Nuvo Deluxe glue in a line across the top and across the bottom and that way I don't further smear any of the ink but um, I can still get that striped border on there. Now I said at the beginning that I was going to be strip, I was going to be stitching on this striped border and that is still the case. I will pull out a matching teal colored floss and I will stitch with it. Um, this is just something that I like to do. Stitching is fun for me. I enjoy doing it. I typically stitch while I'm watching TV to keep my hands busy. Um, I'm just one of those people who must have her hands busy all the time. So there you can see I auditioned those alphas and they just did not work at all. I decided to pull out my Vicky Boot and Fernwood embellishments. I still have a ton of embellishments left from that collection. And that's crazy to me because I bought a second pad of patterned paper to help me use all of the embellishments that I have. And I'm, I'm still finding that I have a ton. And I'm very close to running out of paper yet again. So I am just auditioning different pieces. A lot of the ephemera that I have left at this point is rather large and just doesn't really work. So what I do here is I grab this, it was a cut apart, and I am gonna fussy cut that blue flower sprig out and I'm gonna use that to layer on top of my leafy bit over there on the left hand side. So I'm just going to kind of loosely cut out this um, piece of um, floral bit and I'm going to layer it on that left hand side. I'm not trying to be exact with it because I'm going to put other things over there in that embellishment cluster and I don't feel like it is a big deal if I'm not real detailed with that 
fussy cutting. Now, this is one of my favorite ways to use pocket cards or cut aparts. I don't typically um, make pocket card layouts. I tend to use them on traditional layouts by either fussy cutting icons out of the cards or if they're the right kind of cards, user, using them for journaling. I've also used them to loosely map photos, which is kind of fun, but I don't really use them in that traditional pocket card um, scrapbooking style. It's just not my style, and I decided that I wasn't going to try to force something that I wasn't crazy about. Um, I know that pocket cards are a great way to get more photos and smaller embellishments into an album. And I can do that once in a while. I have a few page protectors that allows me to do that. But I, for a while, was buying so many pocket cards and then they were just laying around and not getting used that I stopped. And I also donated all of my pocket cards. So I really wanted a camera on that left hand side, but the one that I picked up first from the ephemera pack was too large. And so I found this sticker here. Now what I'm doing right now is I'm using the leftover bit from my foam adhesive, and I'm gonna use that in place of fun foam or foam tape, whichever you tend to use. I use my um, powder tool on the back of that sticker before peeling off the rest of the, um, fun, the foam adhesive backing so that it wouldn't stick weirdly on my layout. And now I am just going to dig through here and see if there's anything else that I want to use. I do believe I dig out a tag here in a minute stopped to read the phrases on that little pile of phrases because I thought, oh, maybe there'll be a phrase I can put on here. Like I said, I am really, really trying to use up my fernwood without buying more um, pattern paper. And so I'm just kind of hoping to use as much as possible. So there I found a tag and I'm gonna tuck it behind the right hand side photo. I stuck a puffy phrase sticker on top of the camera and that um, pretty much takes care of my embellishment clusters. But first I wanted to use one of the butterflies. Now I have had the butterflies tucked in with my fernwood it's from Storyteller, not really from Fernwood. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add some fun foam to my title piece, and that'll give this layout a little bit more depth. I kind of play around with where I was putting it. I thought I might try down there at the bottom right, and I just decided I liked it where I initially put it. So now I'm gonna look through these chipboard pieces, and I'm gonna start tucking some of the chipboard pieces in my embellishment clusters. I thought I was done, but I really wasn't. I wanted to kind of play around with these chipboard pieces and use up some more of those because I have like two packs of them and they are partially used and you know, it's, it's time. It's time for me to get Fernwood out of my stash and into albums so that I don't have any guilt when I buy any of her new collections. I kind of thought about putting one of the gnomes and then it was like, nah, I'm not gonna put a gnome. It don't, doesn't really go well with Native American themed pictures and so I just left it off. Okay, I got this layout completely finished. I stitched off camera a line on the top and bottom striped border. I really like the texture that stitching gives and it's kind of why I do it all the time. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank you so much for coming to my channel today. Please make sure that you check out that hop list below in my description box because you will be able to see some amazing creators um, working with some mini paper pads and some of us work with um, scraps as well. But I just, I want you to check out some of those inspiration ideas because you know each of us use paper pads in different ways and I know that we all have paper pads or scraps and we can all gain some great ideas for using these things up. For me I just wanted to use up 
this beautiful Cosmo Cricut paper pad. I'm still not even close to being done, so hopefully I can get some more of it used up, maybe not for next month. Again, thank you for being here. I really appreciate those of you who come to my channel and watch and like, comment, and subscribe. You guys are helping me to build this channel, and I just, I am very grateful to you. I hope that you have a great weekend. Bye. Thank you.